Okay, welcome. So usually in Toronto when I show this picture, people are like, oh, I wish I was there. And I'm walking on campus today, I'm like, wow, that's pretty amazing here, right? <laughs> so this might not entice you, but there is a nice beach there. Um, so I just like to give a pictorial history. I, I can tell you where I've been, but it's much easier to show you where I've been. Um, so I spent eight lovely years in Australia. Um, and this was, I was in Canberra, the bush capital, so this was not, uh, this was not, this is about two hours away, but you just drive two, two, you drive two hours and you have a kilometer of beach yourself. It's lovely. Uh, I love beaches, and so I moved to Oregon, and I got this beach instead. Um, beautiful, beautiful place, just so the beach is like dangerous and it rained a lot, you know, so if you don't like rain, you can fix that. So I'm in Toronto now. It's too cold to rain. Just <laughs> Uh, if you get this, uh, when Michael did it last week, uh, it wasn't this cold, but uh, um, yeah, this is a uh, cold time winter. Anyway, so this is my, 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 my latest speech. Um, okay, so uh, I'm Scott, I'm at Toronto, uh, I'm going to present uh, this language that you probably haven't heard of, which I would like to advertise to you. Um, if you're working on spiritual decision making, and you've had problems modeling domains and exploiting their structure, that's exactly why I created this language. So I'll try to give you some hint of what's going on. Uh, there'll be links and stuff at the end of the talk later. Okay, so, so the original reason I started uh, out uh, to design Riddle was actually not for Riddle itself, but because I was trying to solve uh, this problem in traffic signal control. Um, so traffic's a nice problem because everyone can complain about it, right? No one, I, I don't want really to motivate it. Um, and so the question is, when you want to solve this problem, you want to coordinate all the lights in a city, right? Um, uh, to know when, when the traffic's coming, to sort of you know, get all the traffic through uh, on the green light, but, but the, the cross streets as well as the main arteries. Um, how do you solve this problem? Well, before you plan with it, you've got to model it. And so, um, and so you, 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 you can model it as a micro, as a micro sim, Simulation, which is given by the black dots, uh, you might actually try to aggregate cars into sort of piecewise rectangles. Uh, we try to do here, uh, shown in green. But however we model it, trust me, this is a very complex model. You don't want to write it down for one city, right, in a way that doesn't generalize to other cities. So ideally, you want some sort of raw input, right? So here's the topology of your network. Here's the lanes, etc. Here's the speed limits. Uh, and you can compile this sort of problem. But originally, you know, you're just trying to get work done. So you, so I want to model this as a, as a continuous dynamic vision network, and I tried to write this problem down. And for months, I just kept on making errors in the. So I, I had Java code to, to generate these models. And I kept on making errors in the generation of them. Uh, and I thought, you know, what I really, really want is some language uh, that, at a high level, I can just write a simulator as I went and see your Java, uh, and it'll compile down to the structure that I need to exploit with my planners. Um, so for this, this problem, we ended up choosing uh, mixed integer linear programming, and, and, and about eight, eight years after I started this work, um, I assume Ian just got this out last year, uh, a very nice built planner. It can coordinate green lights in all directions because it's a, it's a mixed integer linear uh, approach, um, so much more flexible than existing uh, controllers. And you know, when this work figured out and you got it working, uh, it got the best paperwork. So if you've been to NIPS, uh, 7,000 people, that's huge. You go to TRB, 12,000 people. So transport still, still beats uh, deep learning currently. Um, <laughs> maybe not for long. Um, but uh, in any event, like, like, like before we could even get to this best labor award, that eight years later, first we had to model the problem. And if you've written down lots of complex problems, you know this is a pain um, for recording a pain problem. Um, OK, so, so this was my motivation. Of course, I didn't want to just model traffic in the end. I want to model. Uh, a large range of complex problems. Um, so that might give you a hint of what I'm doing here, right? So the whole, the whole purpose of Riddle is to model complex, concurrent, like traffic's moving concurrently, the lights are changing concurrently, stochastic, traffic moves, uh, you know, people break and do all sorts of crazy things in traffic, right, you can't predict. Uh, it's hybrid. Typically, you'll model traffic as uh, queue lengths or um, uh, your cars with velocities, etc. So there's continuous and discrete variables. It's sequential because you want to think far ahead, a minute, 10 minutes, or so on, uh, to plan for these green waves, right? So the cars can just go through. So you know, problems like traffic, but many others that we all deal with, uh, are the problems that I wanted to model. Um, and 
you know, you can't tell, even a very competent engineer, right, is not going to write down this model as a dynamic Bayesian network, right? No one speaks that language. I don't speak that language, really. Um, so you want a language for this that is sort of high-level imperative, you know, procedural, uh, that end users, anyone who understands their domain, be it ecological, be it traffic, et cetera, can write that down. Okay? So it's like writing a simulator in Java. Um, this, is, this is intuitive, and then you can easily debug this, visualize it. Uh, this is what a lot of people do. So in the RL competitions, right, because they don't need models, I'll get to this in a second, right, they always do write things down as a sim sim simulator, and then visualizing it's very easy. So I, I do want to start with their motivation, start with these things that are easy to write down, easy to verify that, yeah, this looks like the behavior that I want. Um, but I'm, a, I'm a historically a planner, right, which means I like to exploit structure and problem domains. Um, so I want to compile down some little, little format, right, that the planners can actually read uh, and exploit. Um, and you say, well, okay, but, but, but why? Like, if you do reinforced learning, if you do deep queue learning, right, you don't need the model, you just need a sample. Like, you don't need to know the structure of the model, you just need to use it as a black box sampler. So I'm going to argue that you really throw away a lot of structure when you do this. But if we had tried to solve the, you know, the 30-minute traffic signal coordination problem just by sampling, we would have never solved it, not, not for 10 intersections. Um, so there are, are times where uh, you want to exploit structure that you know about. You know the propagation time between two traffic lights. Right? Uh, you know the max velocity. Right? You shouldn't have to sample to learn these things. So there are, is a lot of structural problems that you do want to exploit. Um, and so, I mean, DQN works for many things, but it won't work for many other things. Uh, I, I, well, I don't know if we have deep mind here, but you know, maybe, maybe I would criticize them for sort of over-focusing, perhaps, uh, on the model free approach. Um, yeah, so again, yeah, you know, consider what structure you're, you're throwing away. Everything you know about a problem that you want to reason about. Um, and model-based planners, I mean, this is a, a, a very, uh, successful and long-lived community, right, they, they need structure for lunch in, in many different ways. Uh, so there are lots of tools you probably don't know about that can solve these problems already. You don't have to write the planners. Okay. So riddles like Java, right, high level. The planner inputs you'll find, if it's, a, if it's an MDP planner, almost often the input is a dynamic Bayesian network. Uh, where, you know, when you look at the high level sim simulator and you look at the low level DBN, the DBN's like a simulator, right? And again, you don't want to start off, but I was going to try to write your DBMs directly. When you consider your bug rate, if you select right, your code assembly. There may be some people too young here to know that pain, but uh, you know, for a while on the ground, I read a lot of assembly uh, years ago. Um, okay. And furthermore, another reason not to write the lowest level language, you might want to compile to a variety of targets. So with the traffic work, eventually, we you know, initially start off with the navigation network, the end solution we ended up with was mixed integer linear program, right? So it's nice to actually have a high level language to compile to a variety of targets. And um, so, so currently we compile to dynamic Bayesian networks, um, mixed integer linear programs, and I'll show you a slide at the end of TensorFlow. What the heck? Well, how's TensorFlow being used here? So I'll give you, give you a hint at the end. Um, okay, so who comes out of the AI community here? Just curious, I don't know the that. Okay. Um, so uh, this language has long roots in the AI community. Um, just as you know, before Scala, there was Java. Before Java, there was C++ and C and, and so on. Uh, this is a, a language in a long evolution uh, of languages. I don't want to claim that it's new. It's not new. In fact, I've never published this. It's a, it's a tech report. It's got a lot of citations because people use it. But I know since I got to publish it, reviewers will say, this is not new. I don't think it's new. I think it's useful. Okay, so I so needed time, big bang. Um, a few years later, geological time, ICAPS. Uh, <laughs> or the, at least the planning and scheduling community, yeah, it came out in the late 90s, but uh, it had its heart and it, its uh, origin of strips. Who knows strips? Stanford Research Institute Planning System. So when I was a master student here, I actually got to work for a few fights. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so, so you know, there's a whole lot of work to start off with modeling determinative domains relationally, that was a nice thing, uh, on up through 2004, there were major changes in to the language. That's one line of work. Uh, at some point, they tried to branch off these languages to make them probabilistic, but they did it in a way they couldn't handle concurrent stochastic events. 
you know, if you look at traffic, everything's changing around you. Like, you know, you drive, but everything else is changing, right? Independent leads to fasting. So, so this, this, this attempt really, I think, failed to capture what, for me, are a lot of the most interesting uh, probabilistic, probabilistic domains. But, you know, like all fields, there were other branches of it. So the uncertainty in the AI community, you know, embraced uncertainty from the beginning, right? It didn't come in later. It came in the very beginning. And you had dynamic Bayesian networks back in 89, factor DPs and POM DPs, and my attempts to lift those methods to relational methods and, and relational formations of my thesis. Then you had probabilistic programming languages. Who knows probabilistic programming? Block, Stan, et cetera. These are really lovely languages. Um, you know, and I looked at all this, I said, you know, how do I, how do I combine all these sort of different cool ideas and bar them together in a coherent language? And so you'll see where sort of riddle combined sort of the DBN approach. You'll see that I specify transitions as probably programs, so I think it's very natural to write these transitions imperatively. Uh, but a lot of the structure of the domain, uh, how the structure comes from the planning community. So riddle is just the latest evolution. Okay. Um, so what is Riddle? If you come from an AI background, you know what graphical models are. It's just a relational classification of a dynamic Bayesian network uh, and an influence diagram. So the DBN tells you you've got these state variables, they're stochastic. I know the probability of x1 prime depends on some just x1, probability of x2 prime depends on the x1 and x2, the previous time step. I get stochastic observations. These actions are squares because they're not random variables, they're under the agent's control. Uh, and reward to diamonds is the utility to trying to maximize. Um, so just unroll this over a long horizon and you get, you know, a, a dynamic vision network and an influence diagram. So these are the, the raw ingredients. This is what a lot of the players read in uh, as their low-level input. Um, so for reference, uh, uh, Michael mentioned the, 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 the Singapore group. Um, and so uh, I, I, I ran competitions in Riddle. I compiled to DBN their uh, XPLDP software will actually translate uh, the DBN and Riddle uh, to their, their format. And they actually won my competition twice. Uh, so it is a state-of-the-art, the state-of-the-art state player. Okay, um, this is not as important. The key thing here is the conditional distributions you'll see are public programs. And that's, basically it makes writing a DBN like writing a simulator. That's very nice. Um, yeah, what's my time? I have till 15 till? Um, okay, so you say, do we really need another planning language, right? Years ago in the logic community, I think Drew McDermott would stand up and say, you know, I'm going to charge you anyone $1,000 for pointing a new acronym in a new logical language. We don't need another one. Um, so I would have to pay $1,000 to introduce my, my real language because I really do think that uh, we need it. And I'll, I'll say, you know, I, if there was a language that could have modeled traffic, I would have used it. I don't like to spend a year of my life writing writing parses and compilers and, and all this stuff. But in this case, I had to. Um, so there, there, there was like, had all these, these ingredients that I found in, in traffic. Uh, but, you know, pretty much salesman, capitalized much, much more than the language. Um, you know, it's a whole software ecosystem. Uh, so there are modeling validation tools. Uh, lots of static checks and dynamic checks that, that you can do to make sure your models are simulating and, and satisfying constraints that you think are very natural for those domains. Uh, a lot of visualization books. So the thing I tell my students is visualize everything you're doing. Uh, because, you know, don't just assume it works, right? It, it, everyone, everyone who's engineered anything real uh, knows that the first thing you do won't work. You, you, need, you need to visualize to understand what's going wrong. Um, after this, compile to all these sort of target formats that are input by the planners. Um, and sort of, uh, uh, I ran some custom competitions with the client server API. The, the <coughs> server would serve up the state, the client would send back the action, and you can do planning that way for competitions. You can also just, you know, imagine the world as your server. Um, oh, so enough suspense. Let's show the damn language. <laughs> okay, fine, yeah, I'll do it. And let me, let me do this through an example different way. Uh, some people have looked at my manual and they've said, you know, you don't really give like a core spec language, just give examples. And like, you know, I, I don't think we learn C by reading the C spec. I didn't. Um, so uh, I really only cover the language sort of the examples. I think it's very intuitive once you see some of the examples. So I'll go back to this wildfire domain. Um, uh, it's been worked on a lot in AI, but I think maybe one of the original references comes out of the ecological community. Uh, I love this term, gridular automata. I'm not sure that's a word, but you can coin it. 
Um, and so the idea was, and I think Michael even worked on this, uh, Tom Dieter did Oregon State's work on it a lot. Uh, you want to model uh, the spread of wildfire. Uh, you have limited resources that can put out fires. You can also cut out the underbrush, right, which limits the spread of fire. Uh, you have targets. So you really, just for, for high level planning purposes, they really do model these problems as grids, right? I can play my grids in a lot of cases, but in modified fires, that's exactly what you're doing. Uh, and, and certain grid cells will, will be targets. They're infrastructure, the things you want to save, right, uh, from the fire. Okay, so you have maybe two fire brigades, right? What do you do with those fire brigades based on your model of how the fire can spread? So this spread cell is burning. I used to have animation, sorry, it's not edited today. Um, but this fire will spread to, to nearby cells. Uh, you can imagine that for any cell, the more its neighbors that are on fire, the more likely fire is to spread to it. Wind and all these other things matter as well. Um, so you're trying to decide where to put out underbrush, where to put out the fires to save the target domain. So, um, you know, even when you don't act, again, the world is changing stochastically around you, right? Every fire is spreading to its neighboring cells stochastically. So how do you model this, this problem? Okay. In Riddle, it is, I don't know, seven lines? Like, no, it's not that many lines. Um, so we have two things that we want to model. For any XY cell, we want to model, for any XY cell, we want to model whether it's burning, and we want to model whether it's out of fuel. Was it, has it been burnt already in some of fuel, or did I, did I cut out the fuel, right? It's quite critical when you're modeling. So for every red cell X and Y, there's basically two going there. Um, so now, this burning is called burning prime. This is, we want to know when a cell is burning in the next state as a condition of the previous state. Okay? And we're going to write this sort of as a simulator. So we're going to say X, Y, so X, Y is burning in the next state. Well, if you, if you put out the fire at cell XY on this, uh, in the previous state, then you know that burning is false, right? So it's return false. Uh, however, if the cell is not out of fuel and it's not burning, then it has some, prob some suggested probability of, 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 set of setting on fire. So what is that probability? We said that the more cells that surround it, up to eight cells that are on fire, the more likely it to be on fire. So we're going to sample, we're, we're, we're going we're to you know, do a coin flip, we're going to sample a Bernoulli. But what's state dependent is the parameter of that Bernoulli, the probability of that cell being on fire. And you'll see here, well, we sum over uh, all x2 and y2 that are neighbors of x and y, and they're burning. And booleans are always interpreted as 0, 1. So when you sum over this, you basically get the sum of neighboring cells that are burning, which is sum between 0 and 8. And then you just sort of pass it through this transform with the signal Right? If all are burning, you max out of one. If, if none are burning, max out of zero, you get a nice S shape signal between them. So the parameter of the Bernoulli state dependent, very easy to write, sort of latex like sum notation. Um, so you, and then so you get parameter and sample. Right? You see Bernoulli sample part. If you're used to discussing programming language or probably pro programming languages, uh, this is not new. It's exactly how blog and scan other languages are written. Okay, finally, you know, if I fall into this case, uh, then basically the previous state, burning x, y, persists in the next state. So the prime state is equal. <coughs> As it feels a little easier, it sells out of fuel x, y. If it is already out of fuel, then it stays out of fuel. Uh, or if it's burning, uh, that will actually stay out of fuel. Um, reward, basically a summation of a bunch of different things that you might hear about. Uh, how much does it cost to cut out the underbrush? If you cut out the cell, how much does it cost for a fire? Uh, how much does it cost for non target cell burning? How much does it cost for target cell burning? So I'm just some of all the cells to do this. Very, very compact spec. <laughs> now, the cool thing is, you take this, this is a different, this is a different riddle spec, but you, you take this riddle spec, which is sort of written down very imperatively as a, as a public program, and you know, this is what you write and debug and visualize, but then automatically the software will compile this into your dynamic Nation network. Trust me, you don't want to write this down yourself. It's really a pain. You will have bugs when you write it. You know, we don't write assembly. We write the, the C or the Java. So have the compiler do this for you. Generates the DBN. The planner reads the DBN. Um, okay. And furthermore, the nice thing is it's relational language. So if I have if I have uh, two cells, uh, two X cells, two Y cells, right, then I can just instantiate. You know, this, this spec here doesn't say how many cells there are, it just says X, Y. 
So at some point, the instance has to say, well, okay, I have a 2 by 2 grid. Okay, and that's what I'm saying here. You know, x pod has two objects, and y pod has two objects. And you specify the neighbor relationship for all the cells, and get a DBN. What if you went 3 by 3? Well, you say, I've got three positions, three y positions. Here's my neighbor relationship. It doesn't have to be a grid. It could be hexagon. It could be whatever you want. So you have to specify what the neighbors are. Voila. You want 10 by 10? I can't show it here, right? But again, you write this very simple eight line model, and then suddenly you just say, okay, I want a thousand by thousand grid. It instantiates the DBN for you. Planner reads DBN. All's good. Okay. Um, I won't go through this problem in too in depth, but I'll show you just a few other features of the language. So, uh, the Mars rover, and, you know, NASA had a lovely effect on the planet community in that they had all these Mars rover problems. And they really made the, the credit community think about hybrid, uh, hybrid planning. So mixed discrete continuous state, continuous time. So, um, and so you know, you, you've done a Mars rover, it's autonomous. Uh, it has to take pictures of certain points during the day, given different constraints. Um, it should plan a path, right, that sort of, sort of tries to maybe take all pictures with the least amount of movement, right? So I can hit this corner for picture one, hit this corner, and snap the pictures and three, right? So how do I model this problem as a riddle? Um, key thing here is basically that I have uh, some, for every picture that I want to take, I have an X position, a Y position, how much value I can take that picture, and what's the error allowed, the size of the bounding box. And for the rover, itself, I have an X position, Y position in time. Uh, I can move in the X and Y, uh, X and y directions, I can snap the picture. Uh, let me go on to the so for movement, this is nice. Uh, so you say, well, the more, the more I move, the more I'm uncertain as to, as to where I end up. So I'll say that x pos prime is just the current position plus how much I move in the x direction plus a sample from a normal distribution. It's white noise, it's zero mean, but the variance of the distribution right, is multiplied by the amount that I move. Right? So the more you move, right, uh, the, the, the larger the, the variance in the sample. That's for x and y. Time just advances, well, it's just how your picture takes a fixed amount of time. Um, which buys if you, uh, you didn't have a picture and you moved instead, uh, then your time is by the amount of sugar, right? So there's just time to make that. Uh, this is sort of Manhattan, this is the price you do, you put it just a little more complex to wait. Um, okay, you basically, for your rewards to go with all the picture points, and if you're in the bounding box, which is all gate condition, uh, then you get the value. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, but any, any discrete, any hybrid domain you want to write down, you write it down like a simulator, right? What's my update to the state based on the previous state? Um, okay, so what are people using uh, Riddle for um, on automated planning or replanning? You know, here's the, here's the traffic model, what should I do for the next five minutes? Okay, you get the updated state after five minutes and you replan. Right? <coughs> um, that's probably the most common use currently of Riddle. Um, it's interesting. If you look at the real software, you'll note that Google is actually a co-author now. So they emailed me back in June, and they said, you know, we really found uh, Riddle to be a great language for testing the scalability of our algorithms, right? Uh, we have all these domains, and we want to scale them up from 2 by 2 to 1,000 by 1,000. We can write them using Riddle, and then just uh, generate these, these sort of scalable domains very easily. Uh, so, there, so there is a group there sort of testing out their algorithms. Uh, with Riddle, just for its scalability. You use a random domain and then scaling the, the domain sizes. Um, there's another use of it which I find quite interesting, which is policy critiquing. So, uh, this guy, um, Zhen Yu uh, from China, is working with the health, uh, the, the health, um, uh, health department there, and they're looking at uh, quarantine policies for, for epidemics. Now, they want to understand their policies, right? They have rules. And what he does is he says, okay, I'll model your domain, I will model your rule-based policy, uh, and then I'll actually run a planner, one that won the competition, I'll run the planner, and I'll actually show you how poor your policy is when compared to the optimal policy in this domain. So he'll say, okay, you know, and he'll visualize it. He'll say, here's what the optimal policy could have done in terms of like the number of infected and how many people were in the network, and here's what your rule-based policy did. So he has a very nice use of the all automated planner, not as the way to prescribe the actions for the end, but as a way to critique the rule-based policy. Maybe people realize that actually they can do much better than they're currently doing. So it's 
So I find it interesting use of the automated planning. It doesn't require the planning board to actually take the action. It's going to the decision report. Um, okay. So years ago, I had, very, um, I had a friend whose father was a very, very uh, well-to-do student business guy. And I said, well, Dan, what, 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 what's your dad's secret business? He's done very well. And he said, my dad said, it's not whether uh, your product's good. It's not whether people like the product. It's whether people think other people like your product. So along those lines, let me tell you who likes Riddle. Um, <laughs> there are... <laughs> Uh, there are at least, I think, uh, 13 or 15 groups of actually written planners that, that will plug into the Riddle interface, right? So you've got your domain, you can run these planners, um, and a lot of people are also modeling their own Riddle domains. I've seen them for satellite, uh, ground command control, um, and emergency management, a whole, whole range of, uh, of applications. So it really, it really is in use. Um, uh, it almost sells to you that way. Um, Finally, I just want to say that, again, the, the high-level idea is that you do want to compile down to different targets. Most planners currently use dummy equation networks. I'm getting a lot more now into mixed integer linear programs given the success I've had in the traffic uh, community. And if you want a really cool technique for doing, uh, for avoiding sample average approximation and doing a different technique for compiling stochastic problems to MILPs, uh, we have a paper at AAAI this past year, which, which I think is the way forward. Um, and TensorFlow. So, so I'll end uh, for my last slide. I'll, I'll show you again the TensorFlow. So literally, I, I mean, what is the query problem? It's just this big sequential function, right, that tells you how you got to your end state given all the actions in the initial state. It's just a big symbolic function. TensorFlow can compile a symbolic function, and you put a reward on that end state, right? I want to reach this goal. Um, and then, no joke, you just apply. So if you apply a gradient to this problem on the actions, right, trying to optimize the actions. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, vanilla stochastic gradient. You can apply this magical RMS prop. Not, not a lot of theory behind it, right? But it does work amazingly well in practice. And you'll see that in this sort of nonlinear navigation domain, this robot sort of has to get to the star, has to really avoid this. This, this center point has a very nonlinear slowdown. Um, it can go through the center point, uh, but it'll slow it down. And, and as we look at the ethics of training of TensorFlow, we're seeing that uh, it, RMS prop is actually able to optimize the actions to sort of uh, move around the, op the, the option to get there in the minimum amount of time. And you know, this is a very nonlinear domain, um, but there are many uses of TensorFlow beyond deep learning, right? When you have symbolic structure, you can compile that. The Riddle domain directly into symbolic structure TensorFlow reads in. So that's something that we're trying to publish right now. Getting, getting a lot of pushback from the community, uh, unfortunately, but uh, uh, pretty interesting directions. OK. So, um, I'm going to put a link in here, uh, but uh, you, it, would, it wouldn't be hard to find a, a riddle if you just Google riddle and GitHub. Um, and I want to say, you know, there's no lack of difficult problems to model, right? The reason I invented riddle was, was, was given my quality in my modeling problems. Uh, and once you model that structure, right, there are tons of penny approaches off the shelf, but once you design yourself, that will interface and, and exploit that structure. That's the whole point of uh, my design of riddle. So I'm over time, but uh, I'll take the question if I can let me.